All right, so in this lecture, we're going to talk about the concept of stress. And I'm sure you've seen it before in your undergraduate classes. And I want to start off with sort of a philosophical discussion or a conceptual discussion of what stress is, because I think a lot of times it's presented as a very fundamental thing. And I like to argue that it's not so fundamental. And you know, one of the ways to think about this, uh, let me say that by saying it's not fundamental, I, it doesn't mean that I don't think it's important or, or we don't need it to solve problems. But um, uh, it's not so fundamental because it's, it's not well defined to say a concept like strain. Uh, you know, we sh have shown previously that there's an infinite number of equally valid definitions for, for strain. And at least, you know, for sure, the engineering strain is something that we can define really well. We can go to the laboratory and measure strain. But I challenge you to go to the laboratory and measure stress directly. I think you'll see that, in fact, we always measure strain uh, or we measure force, and that's usually actually through strain calibrated in some way as well uh, to some known values of force. But anyway, I mean, the, the argument, you know, the sort of physics 101 argument, right, so is if you recall the kind of bait, one of the most fundamental equations in physics is that, you know, any increment of, increment of work um, is a force over some distance, right, the integral of some force over distance. And where here I'm saying that x is our, you know, sort of a current configuration x. Right, so the current configuration. Well, if we take this equation and we simply divide by time to get power, right, so this is this is power d, w d t. dx dt. Right? And now I'm just going to multiply this equation by 1. Right? So I'm going to multiply by 1. Okay? But my 1 is going to take a special form. Right? I'm going to say that it's dv divided by dv, right? So I didn't change that in any way. But I want you to note that dv, where d is like a differential volume element, can be defined by area times dx, right? So a volume can be an area times a length, right? So area times dx. And Obviously, you know, volume is clearly a scalar, and x is a vector, so this is really some sort of dot product. Uh, so there's really some kind of area, multiple areas that were, uh, no, no longer a vector. In component form, something like this, right? So some sort of dot product operation. But I'm going to take this and I'm going to plug it into the denominator. So then I have that power is the integral of f. Maybe I'll get rid of the vector on f and write it in component form. Okay. Now, this guy here, we've already, it's pretty easy to see that that's the velocity vector, right? So. Uh, plugging in and rearranging, then we'd have dvi dxj dv, right? So in the last class, we saw that this is something called the velocity gradient. And this guy, I'm, I'm not going to define right now other than to just give it a symbol, OK? Just something that will this this some fuzzy concept that we're going to define with the symbol sigma. Okay. Now, if you remember, we showed that we're well. Let's first let's suppose that L can be divided up into a symmetric component. 
and an anti plus an anti-symmetric component. Any symmetric tensor or, or matrix can can be divided up this way, and you know we can we can show it. So the symmet to symmetricize L, we have one half L plus L transpose, and the skew symmetric or anti-symmetric part of L is one half L minus L transpose. And the L transpose is cancel, and you have two L's, and that causes the halves to cancel, and you get E equal to L. All right. Well, this term here should be familiar from last time, is that it's this rate of deformation, right? Rate of deformation tensor. So we can say that L is the symmetric part D plus some anti symmetric part, we're going to say W. Okay, and so if we use this relationship and, and we plug it back into our equation one more time, so now we have sigma, I'm going to use a colon here, I'll talk about what that is in a second, dw dv, all right, so this colon operator is a, is a double dot product or a tensor product, so inner product, so that's going to be like sigma ij dij. Okay, that's what the colon operator is. So sigma d is that. <clears throat> now if we just make one more assumption on this thing we haven't given a name to yet, sigma, and that it's symmetric. And if we do that, then uh, any symmetric tensor or matrix, uh, double dot product or colon operator uh, with, an, with a skew symmetric so, I'm sorry, let me say this again. If sigma is symmetric and we take the inner product with an anti symmetric, skew symmetric W, then that is going to be equal to zero. Okay, that's just an identity and we can prove it. What that's finally going to leave us with in terms of this equation is that. It's the integral power is the integral sigma d dv. Okay. Now, if you remember, d is is this rate of deformation, and we showed that in the in the small strain limit that it approaches the strain rate, right? So we might also say for for the small strain case that you know the strain rate. DV, and this is this is the power. Okay, so what this guy is that we never gave a name to, and we'll define it at least geometrically in the following. We're going to call this the stress. And here I've sort of heuristically, uh, thermodynamically argued that the stress is simply the work conjugate or power conjugate. Work conjugate, just might say power conjugate, right? The work or power conjugate with strain or strain rate. So it's the thing that when you compute, it's it's the thing, the placeholder that's sitting right here, that when you do this double dot product and operator and integrate over the volume, gives you power. Okay, so it makes this equation thermodynamically consistent. Okay, so that's sort of my conceptually what I say the stress is. It's it's not such a fundamental concept like strain that we can go and measure. It's that thing that makes the thermodynamics consistent, such that when we contract it with strain, which is well defined, we get work or we get power in in the, in the in a time varying sense. Okay, so now we'll go forward and define stress uh, sort of more geometrically. 